We're revisiting the garden this morning to see how all those bulbs did that were planted in January. And this is purple rain. I'm really happy with it. At first I was a little bit surprised because they started coming up pretty early and they were so short. But they've grown bit by bit. And now I guess they're probably, oh, maybe 10 inches tall. It's supposed to be 12 to 14, but they're just beautiful no matter what height they are. Just beautiful. Really happy with those. These are planted just outside the potager. So we will walk over to the potager and see what's going on over there. So here we are back in the potager. And starting with our beautiful tulips that we planted in January. You can see how those buckets have filled up. Those old rustic buckets look absolutely wonderful with these stately, gorgeous tulips inside them. Now the tulips are a little ahead of schedule it seems because these bubblegum tulips were supposed to be mid-May bloomers. Well, guess not, but the little ones next to them are Negrita. They should be deep purple and they are going to be on schedule. Alongside them, I changed my mind about what to put here. That's a nice thing about it. You can change your mind and do all sorts of things, but I decided to put Swiss chard along here. These were little bedding plants I picked up pretty cheaply, so I just decided I'll pop these in. Unfortunately, my peacocks have discovered them and they've been munching on them, so they'll have to be covered in these protectors, which I put the sage under. The sage uh, came from two plants from another garden, which I just split apart, and I got seven sage plants out of it. This is purple sage. On the other angle over there, I've got um, cat mint. That also came from another garden. And along here, oh my goodness, look. This was the beautiful concrete planter with tulips and muscari. This is the tall grape hyacinth. It's just got a really deep bluish purple color and really love it. And these are the kind of bulbs that are going to multiply, multiply, multiply underground. These are the La Belle Epoque. I'm not sure what they're going to look like, but they look like they're about to burst. And I think they're going to be fabulous. Over there is that long strip that I uh, told you about, that you could do just about anything in there. But this has roses, lamb's ear, daffodils, muscari. And yesterday I threw in some evening primrose pink evening primrose seeds. So after those muscari are bloomed, we should have lots of tiny little delicate pink primrose. Over here, this was the lavender strip. This has the daffodil, Salome daffodils. It has little crocuses. They're starting to come up and there's about 25 of those. Unfortunately, my lavender, I don't think it's going to come back. I thought it was, but it's given me five good years of service, and I think it's seen its last days. Um, I don't know what, what happened, but I think we just got too much rain this winter. So I put in little pots of lavender instead and interspersed them. I'm going to pull up these old lavenders. I like the terracotta because it really, really goes great with the, the brick. Um, it repeats that color. And that's something you want to do when you're designing your garden. You want to repeat the elements, you want to repeat the colors. Now this little cast iron fence is just something I put up to keep my birds out for a while. And that will come up. I just use this all over the place when I'm trying to <laughs> protect new plants. These are the Salome daffodils looking good. So this section has turned out to be a beautiful burst of spring color. And now you can see why you would want to plant some beautiful bulbs in your potager just to start things out. Now we're at another angle of the potager and this is another one of those old enamel wash tubs. Ah, bubblegum tulips. They're beautiful, aren't they just beautiful? Oh, I so hope that you planted tulips or that you are going to if you didn't for your potager for your first spring color in your garden. 
Yesterday, I watched a little bee go inside one of these white tulips. He was in there for quite a long time, and I kept, you know, observing him. And when he came out, his little legs were just covered in that yellow pollen. Then he came back out again, and he looked for another white flower. He wouldn't go into these pink ones, but he found another white flower. He looked so weighed down with that pollen, I don't know how he got into it, but <laughs> he was really partial to these white tulips. Along with these white tulips, I put in some sugar snap peas to go up this trellis, which is just an old metal trellis. from an old metal shelf I had, which duplicates that one right there, which is just a little workstation. If you can get a little workstation somewhere in your potager, it's a great place to put your pots. You can put your compost in your, in your soil, in buckets underneath. Down beneath this wash tub of tulips is a small no-dig bed, part of the potager as well. And what I'm really particularly happy about, and I hope that you will do this too in your potager if you have room, is put a little dwarf fruit tree. This is a dwarf peach, looks like a stick, but as you can see, there's life in it. And I always have these old farm things I just don't know what to do with. They're really neat, but they come in handy for all sorts of things. These are cast iron wagon wheels. So what am I gonna do with these? So I thought, well, maybe it keeps my chickens from digging in here because it's a barrier. I might plant um, little herbs, you know, every other or every third spoke that will keep my chickens out of there. It'll protect those little plants. Now the mate to that little peach tree is right across the walkway here. This is a blank slate right here, nice little section shaped like a tiny piece of pie. And there's the other dwarf peach tree coming up. I just put these in. Oh, in the fall, so they were even smaller than that. Over here, this is the very edge of the potager. More tulips coming out of an old wheelbarrow, and all the planters that I put in, all the tulips are blooming. So you can just use your imagination and find all kinds of interesting things. Um, you know, in yard sales and on Craigslist and at auctions. But I just love old metal straw is a good example of the no dig bed method. Um, I've got the cardboard underneath it, the straws on top. I'm just waiting on the mulch. But in the meantime, it has just kept every single weed out. You can see where I didn't put the straw or the cardboard. The weeds are just coming up like crazy. But I couldn't put anything there because there's a water pipe there. But this funny old weather vane, I got it, I don't know, I think I got it at a flea market or something. But it's great for beans. Last year it had morning glories on it. You could grow scarlet runner beans, you could grow sweet peas on here. Wouldn't that be beautiful right in the middle of this space? What can you do with a space like this? Oh, so many things. But I've decided that I'm going to give blueberry bushes a try. Um, I'm going to do three blueberry bushes along this strip. It'll take them a long time to get big. So in the meantime, underneath them, I could plant some kind of a, a ground crop, like, uh, you know, maybe wonderful little colorful squashes, maybe those little miniature pumpkins. And then behind that, this is the very edge of the potager. There's a trench back there. We're going to fill that with compost, and I have uh, raspberry canes coming. So, what else would be great here? Oh my goodness, think about, think about, this is cow panel. It's uh, not really that unsightly, it kind of blends into the background, but my goodness, uh, tomatoes, cucumbers, those little bitty pumpkins. But I'm thinking probably some heirloom tomatoes and then sunflowers. Can you see just big, beautiful sunflowers growing up along there? Just use your imagination. And the last thing I want to show you is this fantastic old horse trough I found. We got this for $40. Look at how long it is. This is what I transplanted the strawberries into. I think they'll do a lot better in here than they did on the ground where my birds were eating them and also the slugs 
at least up here, they're safe from the chickens. And these also have little sweet peas behind them. I've used these old dead pet pitch forks, which are no good, of no use to me anymore, but they will certainly help those peas start climbing up this cow panel. So think about what you can do in your garden. You can do so much with so many spaces. You can just pack it in there in a potager. And it's kind of a pleasant, interesting space. Lots of curves, lots of walkways, lots of interest. And as you can see, everybody likes to hang out in here. <laughs> this is a very popular, popular garden. Oh, I almost forgot. We have two nesting geese sitting on about 20 eggs. They're best friends and they share that nest. You can hear their mate in the background. He's not too happy about it because he's sort of been deserted. And this is a wonderful cold frame that my husband built for me in about three hours. All the seedlings are in there, in my windowsill, and under a grow light in the house. And those are the buckets of tulips that we planted. I think you can see why planting tulips in your potage is going to make you so happy. And last but not least, the beautiful candy striped tulips growing in the wash buckets. I think these are my favorites. In the morning they're tight and you can just see the red, kind of a blush, blush, deep blush pink really, with little white stripes. But in the afternoon or when the sun comes out, they open up and you can see the stunning yellow in the center and all that pollen for the bees. Oh, the bees have been swarming around here all day. This is something I will absolutely plant again. They're so tall. And they're just so, so stunning. So next time in Hopalong Hollow, we'll come back and revisit things and maybe talk about some garden follies that you can add to your potager and some herbs that you might want to plant. From Hopalong Hollow, this is Jerry.